We've all watched Ancient Aliens, where it supposes almost anything from the past has either been made and either built by aliens. Now, for today, we are showing off a channel called Robert Seffer that instead supposes that everything has been built not by aliens, but by Atlanteans. Robert here has a fairly sizable channel, getting more than tens of thousands of views on each of his videos. And while Robert gives off a very neutral and intellectual perspective on history based on how he comes off, the truth of the matter is that Robert isn't as he appears. To start off, let's talk about the subject of... The problem with Robert is that with his spiderweb of ideas, he really never links any of his sources or concepts he's talking about. So of course I would type into Google word for word what he said. And here I found something strange. His words were almost near carbon copies of statements made and from the best, the most trustworthy, and the most renowned referenced academic source on the internet, Wikipedia. Now, of course, I've noticed some reviews on Robert's literature that call it a very similar issue, but maybe this is a character flaw from his past. Those books are five years old and maybe he's changed. And maybe the quote I found was just a fluke. So I did more research and nonetheless, I came back to the same conclusion. A huge amount of Robert's material is plagiarized. As a man of proof using one of his more newer videos, the fourth way to enlightenment. So all of his videos start with him doing random stuff as you're seeing right now. The intro is completely fine, as you can tell it's him by the words he uses. Reduced to nothing more than corporate financed, politically motivated, Marxist indoctrination centers, pushing a globalist agenda. As soon as he switches to the topic of his video though, he's plagiarizing. No, I'm not even kidding. And composer of Armenian and Greek descent, who was born in a part of the former Russian empire that is now Armenia and taught that most humans do not possess a unified consciousness and thus live their lives in a state of hypnotic waking sleep. Yeah, he's pulling that from Wikipedia. And what makes this tricky is that when he starts bringing up the Bible in a few seconds, I don't know if he's actually speaking, if that's his own words, or if I just haven't found the source he took it from. In total, about 25.86% of his video is plagiarized. If we exclude the beginning, we can add this up to 35.32%. While this still is a large amount, it still seems relatively small, as it's not the majority, as that just leaves up 6468 to be not plagiarism. To get better insight, I broke his video into four bits. Plagiarism, his original material, quotes, and clipped videos from third parties. Then, if we look in total at the percent time of his videos, where it's Robert's own ideas, we get 39.81% of his video is strictly from him. Remove the intro, we drop that down to 17.79%. So there is more plagiarism in Robert's video than his own ideas. So if you think Robert's smart, you're going to remember that he isn't posting his own ideas, but stealing the ideas of others. My favorite piece of plagiarism from his video, and while you may guess it's from Wikipedia, right he does quote a lot from wikipedia but one section isn't from wiki it instead comes from a reddit post for example he noticed that the completion of small voluntary tasks with focus gives one immense power confidence charisma and magnetism and the quotes that we see after are the same ones that Robert mentions. For someone whose YouTube icon is them wearing a graduate hat, it's surprising on how much plagiarism they're using. This amount isn't acceptable in high school, let alone college or a university. This is all to show that Rob here isn't some intellectual powerhouse that many in his comments think he is, as most of his videos, like his literature, contain a wide swaths of plagiarization, with little of anything actually from, well, him. Enough of Robert's intellectual dishonesty. Let's get on to... I've stated before that Robert here believes that Atlanteans had built any semblance of civilization, with a similar vibe of that of aliens. 
However, the purpose of Atlantis isn't because of a cool sci-fi exploration of ideas, as Atlanteans have typically been betrayed as a very scientific mythological civilization, so it wouldn't be completely unusual to swap aliens out for Atlanteans. However, as said before, Robert isn't discussing Atlantis because it's a fun myth. But as a method to reject the out of Africa theory, instead supposing that one group of the human race had instead descended from the godlike Atlanteans. The population that split off prior to Neanderthals splitting off from modern humans. So it's a fairly old population. And almost 11% of the ancestry of Africans comes from this ghost archaic population. So compared to the 2% or the 3%, attributable to Neanderthals and Denisovans. So this had a fairly big impact in terms of how much ancestry comes from this population. Which is not found in the DNA of Asians and Caucasians, which makes the ancient myths, legends, and biblical stories sound more plausible, regardless of whether UFOs were involved or not. And the obsolete theories, such as the out of Africa hypothesis, sounds more and more like a politically motivated fairy tale. The clip has no explanation for how it disproves the out of Africa theory. Robert just says it does, and then goes on to suggest that Asian aliens are plausible. And as the title might suggest, that some humans may be from Atlantis. Not only that, but Robert is leaving out information for his audience. Robert says it's not found in the DNA. However, in the video, they don't ever make mention of this. In fact, if we go a minute before the clip was played, we actually see the complete opposite. There's one other question we also asked, which is, can we say whether this was an African-specific signal, or was this shared between Africa and out-of-Africa populations? I won't say too much about this, but our current estimates suggest that some of the signal is actually prior to the split between Africans and out-of-African populations. And we can see that, in fact, it does not say that it's not found in non-African populations. It says it right on the top that the it's shared with non-Africans. Looking around and checking his other videos and seeing if he can bring up anything about the concept of archaic DNA, I could only find one other video that makes mention of it in its title. However, the video never makes mention of archaic DNA or an admixture. But the description below the video does. We also get a little tidbit a fact that while he plagiarizes other works, he also fails to understand them. As right above the study, he gives a small explanation for it. However, if we actually read the study, it never once mentions the term homo erectus. They call it ghost archaic DNA. Secondly, it's not simply sub-Saharan, as they only tested four populations from West Africa. Those are the Yoruba and Asan from Nigeria, Gambian in the Western Divisions, and Mende in Sierra Leone. So even a small fraction of West Africa itself. Staying with the same video from the clip, Robert questions on what Plato meant by mortal admixture. ...began to fade away and became diluted too often and too much with the mortal admixture and the human nature got the upper hand. They then, being unable to bear their fortune, behaved unseemly and to him who had an eye to see grew visibly debased. So what did Plato mean by mortal admixture when he said that the Atlanteans divine portion began to fade away and became too diluted too often by the mortal admixture? So what does mortal admixture mean? Well Plato does tell us in the beginning of Critias. And Poseidon receiving for his lot of the island of Atlantis beget children by a mortal woman and settle them in a part of the island. So already with the Atlanteans, we already have a balance between mortal and divine blood. And at some point, there becomes more mortal than God. Robert also asserts that Atlantis fell because of multiculturalism. Its demise, it was already a morally degraded society, which had already undergone generations of multiculturalism, which weakened their society, ethics, morals, and many of its inhabitants became materialistic, greedy, and a spiritually ugly civilization. To be clear, they make no such mention of this. They only bring up the fault of human nature. 
and human nature came about because the citizens became more mortal than God. So Robert's answer to the mortal admixture is instead proof of it being that there are multiple species of people. And that's why Robert later on brings up archaic ghost DNA. Since Poseidon had children with mortals and this archaic ghost DNA exists, that means the out of Africa theory is bunk. Yeah, that's some very nonsensical reasoning. I think from the statements about the Homo erectus is that Robert here doesn't think greatly of Africans and doesn't want white people to be associated with them at all. That's because Robert here is clearly a... Now, many people claim that the word is overused, and I'm probably being hyperbolic. I'm not. Robert is definitely a Nazi. For example, here's the first section of the Enlightened video that I showed early on. Many people are indoctrinated into the belief that the good guys won World War II by defeating fascism, which may or may not be the case. That's the loudest dog whistle in the world as it's clear who Robert thinks should have won World War II. We can also add on the fact that Robert loves talking about how awesome Nazi Germany was, or that the back of his book contains the Nazi Germany bird, or the fact that he constantly uses the swastika symbol, or that he loves and praises Aryans. Mm, I wonder who Robert favors. But one of the more notable points is from Robert Sever's DNA results. Establishing Germanic or Aryan ancestry, a requisite for my grandfather's high-ranking position in the German military as an officer in the SS. So I was pretty confident that the German side would not contain any Ashkenazi Jewish DNA, which is a demographic of German Jews that speak Yiddish, which is essentially a branch of High German linguistically with some hebrew mixed in but a genetic this firstly is cringe no one in their right mind brings up the fact that their grandpappy was a high-ranking ss officer and then leads onwards to bring up the fact that they lack any jewish dna this isn't a dog whistle anymore this person explicitly telling you that they're proud of their german reich history especially since it lacks any jewish dna in it he's explicitly telling you that he's a Nazi. Robert here is a pseudoscience Nazi. He takes typical woo science with um, most of the time being plagiarized and then ham fists his own racial views, typically with a just so story to explain the connection between the two, which just sucks up very clearly on a moral ground. We have Robert here who is very clearly stealing other people's work. His own explanations have no connection to science. He is clearly a Nazi. And he's getting more views and more subscribers than people who actually put work and time into their videos, unlike Robert. 